everyone. I'm JJ Walsh here in Hiroshima. And today we are talking about the amazing Minka Summit from last year and upcoming this April this year. And I have the amazing Stuart and Andrea joining me today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank so you. It's our pleasure. Yeah, it's an amazing event. Started last year. This is the second time uh, you're going to have it in new location, uh, focused on Minka, remodeling, old homes, Akia, so many craftspeople and everything. Uh, Stuart, can you give us a little, up, like a summary of last year, how it got started? What what was some of the takeaways for you? Sure, sure. Well, when we... <clears throat> When the uh, membership, <clears throat> excuse me, of the Facebook page and the, the board of Kominka Japan first began hatching the idea of some kind of get together, it was it was really conceived as, hey, let's have a big barbecue and maybe we'll get <clears throat> 30 or 40 people and we can tour a couple Minka and people can chat and meet one another. And it was very, very small scale and very informal uh, initially. And then uh, gradually more and more people wanted to come and uh, many people offered to give presentations and the, the scale of it just got bigger and bigger. And I think what really uh, put it uh, over the top was I somewhat sheepishly sent uh, a, an invitation to uh, Alex Kerr to be our keynote speaker. And once he said yes, then we realized, oh, we're actually doing something really big now. Uh, we better make sure that it's good. And the, the scale got grander and grander and uh, really beyond uh, any of our experience to, to handle an event uh, on that scale. But we did the best we could. and. Um, it fortunately, all the pieces fell into place uh, in the end, and we had a, a huge turnout uh, from people coming from not just all over Japan, but in spite of the COVID restrictions at the time, uh, we had people coming from as far away as the UK and, and even Poland. So that was a big surprise. Um, the event was basically divided into three main sections. We had guest speakers, and we had the Minka Mall, and we had the Minka Tours. And um, all three of those turned out really, really well. The, the guest speaker presentations were all really well attended. Um, the speakers were outstanding. And uh, they, there's Alex. And um, they had a great time, and um, uh, it was very informative, covering a wide range of topics. Uh, the Minka tours turned out to be really fun. Uh, it was very important for me to have the local community involved, and that they were having a good experience as well. And they were thrilled that there were so many people that uh, were so enthusiastic uh, about uh, Minka and Hanase and where the event was held. And um, they were just, they, they couldn't believe it. They couldn't believe, I mean, this is a village that has a, pop, a regular full-time population of about 125 people. And we had about 400 people come to the summit. So it really changed the village uh makeup for for a weekend and uh and the minka mall was great all the uh people that uh, all the vendors and organizations that participated did a really great job and uh were very pleased so we did have a few logistical uh glitches here and there which was understandable considering we uh we were doing it for the first time and I think uh, this year, um, Andrea, who I'm going to talk about a bit, who's supervising the, the Aichi event this year, is really doing an outstanding job there, making sure that we have um, a superior support in terms of, um, you know, logistical things like uh, translation 
uh, interpreter uh, services and that kind of thing. So I think a lot of, you know, the few glitches that we had, things, things I think are going to be smoothed out a lot better this year. And well, it was a great event last year, Stuart, and you guys were working so hard. Uh, the village of Hanase was gorgeous and a great place to go and tour uh, Minka that were uh, like for sale, as well as seeing ones uh, that were beautifully remodeled and really inspiring. You get those ideas about, oh, maybe I would try that in my house, you know, right, and, right. And just that tactile being able to visit the houses as well. And you're going to be doing that again this year, right? This year, I, I yeah. Think did such a great job, Stuart. It was a wonderful event. Well, again, it was really, it was the entire board. Everybody worked so hard. Uh, one of the downsides for us in, as individuals were we, we were all kind of stuck in one place for most of the event. Uh, Vince Eng, who's not with us uh, today, he was pretty much in the Minka Mall the, the whole weekend. I was doing a Minka tour of my own Minka. So I was uh, sort of in a remote location for, for big chunks of the weekend and so forth. And uh, toward the end of the weekend, all of us on the board uh, were getting approached by people saying, are you going to do it this year, next year? Are you going to do it next year? Please do it next year. Please do it next year. And we were all so totally wiped out. Exhausted. We, we, yeah. <laughs> we couldn't think about anything for like a month, you know, afterwards. Amazing. And yeah. And then um, Andrea, one of our board members who's right there, uh, she, you know, at, at that point we were sort of thinking, well, maybe we'll do it every other year. Alex uh, Kerr suggested that as a, as a possibility. So we were kind of thinking maybe every other year. And then Andrea came forward and su sort of surprised me with this uh, really nice PowerPoint presentation about uh, suggesting that we do it in 2023 in Aichi. And um, I know from her past experience and uh, the presentation really covered all the things that I was concerned about with anybody trying to attempt such a thing like this again. Uh, and she had all the bases covered. She had thought about all the, the contingencies and planning and logistical issues and everything. So uh, I was really impressed. And then Andrea and I talked with the rest of the board and we realized, no, no, Andrea is capable of doing a really outstanding job. And, uh, you know, the problem is wherever it is, you need to have somebody there who's uh, managing everything. And unfortunately, they end up doing, uh, you know, certainly at least two thirds of all the work. And so it's a huge, huge job. Yeah. And uh, well, we're so we're so excited that it's happening again. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and the thing is, Andrea, yeah. I, I have to say, you know, Andrea is really doing an outstanding job. She's she's really, uh, I mean, the rest of the board is helping, but she is doing the lion's share of the work and is really putting together something that I think already is going to be. Uh, better than last year's summit. So oh, she's, wow. really doing, she's really doing a spectacular. Well, job. we're so excited for another one to build on this great foundation that you guys started. Uh, we already have a great comment. Uh, someone on YouTube, thanks for joining for us. He says, I wasn't able to join last year due to work obligations. Have you ever thought about doing at least the presentations live for those who aren't able to attend? Good question. Well, I know that last time it was something that we had considered, but we uh, the the technical uh, limitations were just kind of you know there was too much. We were trying to do uh, make sure we had proper video projection and Wi-Fi where we needed it and everything. So trying to add live streaming on onto that, we were able to to. Uh, video record all the presentations and I think most or all of those are now online on the website and uh, we will certainly do something like that again for okay. this year's summit. And all right so maybe this is a good time to transition to Andrea. Yes. Andrea over to you. Do you want to give us a little preview of what people can expect from this year's Minka Summit? 
Absolutely, I would love to. And and firstly, thank you, Stuart, for your very, very kind words. Uh, as as was the case last year, it's very much a group effort. Um, and I uh, really want to say thank you, a very warm thank you to Lauren, because she's really liaised with so many uh, fabulous uh, presenters and, and workshop leaders. So um, again, it's been a, a really a group effort. And uh, we've modeled this year uh, basically uh, completely on uh, what, what, what happened last year. We do have a few new things that have kind of organically uh, come about that we're very, very excited about. But again, we'll have uh, sessions, we'll have presentations, a wide range of topics, wide range of, uh, you know, really, really interesting presenters. Uh, we'll also have some DIY workshops, some of which are uh, scheduled, you can see them on the schedule, and then some of which are uh, ongoing in the Minka Mall. Uh, and speaking about the Minka Mall, of course, we'll again have the Minka Mall. Um, I think this year, the actual mall size is just slightly smaller than last year. But again, it's a really large, beautiful wooden building set in a really, you know, very natural, very green wooded area. So I think it may remind people who attended last year of the Minka Mall last year. Um, and we'll again have a really wide range of people that are going to come and have booths um, ranging from uh, a, a, a local furniture maker who is a, actually also an, an iron works maker and he makes furniture from uh, old from Kozai from old wood from Kominka uh, to uh, someone that's going to come uh, and teach people how to make um, panels lovely decorative panels that are covered with, tata uh, not with tatami, sorry, with um, old kimono fabric. And then next to them in the Minka Mall, we'll have a shop selling beautiful, beautiful bags uh, that are made from the, the edging, the fabric edging uh, uh, from tatami. Um, and I mean, these are, they're, they're just really spectacular. I've never seen anything like them. Uh, next to them in the Minka Mall, uh, we'll have a shop sell selling clothing made from uh, from again from uh, old kimonos uh, we'll also have um, pottery making workshop that will be ongoing onigiri making workshop that will be ongoing so it'll be kind of a combination of things that people can do some of which are not exactly related to uh, kominka or traditional Japanese uh, building methods and then a number of which are there's also going to be uh, nonprofit groups that are devoted to um, protecting and preserving Kominka and uh, groups that will help people uh, in English find uh, a Minka or an Aki a Minka. Um, it, the list goes really, really on and on. And we're also very excited because uh, Chuck Kaiser will be returning uh, to give a presentation and also uh, a workshop and also uh, uh, an organic farmer for people who don't know Chuck Kaiser. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. organic farmer. Uh, and then also um, Emily Kaneko Reynolds will be coming. She's a master plasterer and she'll be coming and giving a demonstration about uh, Tsujikabe plastering. So, wow. and there's so much more. I'm not even, I'm. Yeah. I'm well, I'd love to, we have time. So I'd love to go through the schedule. Uh, day by day and just talk in more detail about what people can expect. Uh, but we we had Frass uh, saying he didn't know there was a website. So I have shared uh, the website link here. There's also a very active Facebook page. Uh, that's kind of the backstory of how the Kuminka Summit started, right? Starting with the Kuminka Japan uh, web uh, Facebook page, which has be grown significantly, right, Stuart? Yes, I, uh, I I haven't even looked, but it's I, I think it's well over three thousand people now. That's awesome! Amazing. And I I met so many people uh, from the page and then at the event who I followed up with, including Andrea, Lauren, Stewart. You have all been on my show as well, yeah. uh, talking about your love of of Minka and restoration projects and renovation. Well, that's been one of the great things about the Facebook page is that uh, people who are who have their own 
uh, Minka projects that they're working on, uh, through the page, they realize, oh, we're in the same prefecture. We're only, you know, 10 kilometers away. And they, they meet up and they become friends. Or maybe they're a little bit further away, but then they come to the summit and they can meet one another and they make plans to visit each other's Minka and so forth. So that's been really great. Yeah, the connection between the people at the event was just amazing. Everybody was so friendly. Everybody had great tips about restoring and renovating and projects that they're doing. I wanted to interview everyone I met. Yeah. <laughs> it was amazing. Um, Lauren, do you want to give us, before we go into the schedule, we'll bring Andrea back to talk about each day of the schedule. Uh, but Lauren, you want to talk about the speakers a little bit? Is that your wheelhouse? Yeah. Um, yeah, we kind of shared that, but I can talk about some of them. Um, yeah, of course, Alex will be back. Alex Carr will be back. Uh, he was our keynote speaker last year, and this year he's giving a presentation, and he'll be introducing this year's keynote speaker. Um, he'll also have a booth at the mall selling his books and his incredible calligraphy. Um, and then Asby Brown, also returning, doing another presentation. Uh, and also we'll have a booth. Um, let's see who else, who else is speaking? We, and the two of them plus our keynote speaker will be on a panel. So we're gonna have several panels this year and that's the Minka Master panel. So that will be uh, Takeshita San, Alex, Asby and Tomoko Kubo, who's sort of a Akia expert. So the, the four of them will be on the panel, which you yourself will be, uh, will be, will be overseeing. So that will be great. And then two mini panels, um, one that I'm I'm hosting, which will be basically how I found my Minka. So we have a few people who have different stories about how they got into this, how they found their Minka, uh, talk a little bit about it, and then hopefully questions and answers from the audience. And then the other one will be people who are using Minka, but not for just living in, that they're using them for cafes or studios or you know, breweries or whatever other uses you can think of for Minka. So there'll be that mini panel. Also, uh, Chuck will be speaking again, as we talked about, organic gardening. Um, and you also have a, a writer's uh, panel, right? The writer's top corner? Yeah, not a panel, but yeah, we're gonna, we've carved out some time for the four writers who are coming to talk. Um, Hannah and Karen were just coming as attendees, but because they're both such fabulous writers, we invited them to read and to have a writer's booth. So they'll be there with their books. Um, Hannah is working on a new book about restor restoring Aminka. So it hopefully will be ready maybe by next year's, but she can certainly talk about it. Yeah, and, when um, Hannah was Karen on the show uh, the second time, she talked about her project, her crowdfunding yeah. for the new remodel uh, business that she's mm -hmm. starting. So that would be yeah. great to hear about that project too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then Karen Hill Anton, um, of course, wrote that beautiful book, uh, The View from Breast Pocket Mountain. So she'll be there with that book. And she also is just about to publish another book. So that's really good timing Wonderful uh, for her as well. And Asby and Alex always have so many projects going on. Alex is finally releasing in English one of his books that he wrote in Japanese about 10 hidden places in Japan. Yeah, so, so this is not yeah. published yet. This is a brand new no. Alex Kerr book in English. So that's very exciting exactly. that we're gonna get a preview. Exactly, right, 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 right. So, so yeah, all of that will be really exciting. Yeah, wonderful. And they'll be there to meet and talk to people as well. So. Fantastic. And Lauren, uh, you've done your own beautiful restoration remodel projects, which you talked about last year. Mm -hmm. uh, Andrea, for people who don't know, Andrea's business or nonprofit is all about uh, preserving old, beautiful Kominka, even sending them abroad amazing projects. Uh, Stuart, you've done amazing remodel projects as well as a film about Minka, uh, right, you did a right. documentary film, right? So yeah, that's for true. people that don't know, you guys are all deeply passionate about Kuminka and old home remodeling. Um, Andrea, you wanna take us through day by day? Let's uh, talk a little bit more slowly about the schedule and then maybe Stuart and Lauren can also jump in. How does that sound? 
Sounds great. Um, and we will be putting today, we're going to put up a, a PDF that people can download, which is the, the schedule at a, at a glance. And then also on another page on the website, uh, we already have almost finished. Basically, I think all of the information is there, details about each presentation. So in the at a glance uh, version, you can see in English, and then also we have everything in Japanese as well. Uh, on the website, you can see what's happening. Uh, and then if you if you go over to the, the page that has uh, the details and descriptions, you can learn more about the content uh, of great. each session and also each uh, workshop as, as well. And Friday, we've extended Friday a little bit from how it was last year. Last year, uh, Friday, I think, uh, started with registration. And then we had a, you know, a really, really wonderful meet and greet dinner. Uh, this year, we're going to start it a bit earlier in the day. Uh, we'll start registration at about noon. And then from there, uh, we have kind of a a cycle of events and people can join at various points. Uh, but beginning with uh, a short hike, it's nothing too strenuous. So we, we hope people won't be put off by that. But it's it's really interesting. It's a few minutes drive from the venue. We'll carpool, uh, of course, as needed. If people don't come by car, that's no problem. You, you know, people will be able to take them in their cars. Uh, and it's a sustainable forestry walk, which will be guided by uh, a really lovely man named uh, Tajitsu-san. And uh, he's actually by training an aeronautical engineer, uh, but he's become uh, become a forester and he's so knowledgeable. Uh, so he'll take people through a really lovely walk uh, through the through a forest and talk about sustainable forestry. And is, is that uh, him in the helmet? With that everybody, is, okay, that, yeah. Yeah. That that is that is indeed him, um, and then this ties in with the next step. Uh, and in in terms of the sustainable forestry walk, people need to begin it be need to, need to join at the beginning. Otherwise, they're going to be lost in the forest. Um, <laughs> that won't be much fun for for anyone. Uh, so that really does need to be joined at that time. But for people that come a little bit later, they're very welcome to join. Uh, the next three things that we have planned, which are the first is a yakisugi demonstration. And this is actually connected to the sustainable forestry walk because um, the trees that are in the forest are often not at all these, you know, these local trees uh, are not sort of at a, a grade that um, housing makers want to use them. And so therefore they're, uh, you know, they're, it's not beneficial to the local economy. Uh, therefore, what they're doing is using uh, these trees for yakisugi. And then that's the tie-in, of course, as you can imagine, to the yakisugi demonstration. Uh, and oh, people- wow. That that's awesome. I, I'm a huge fan of yakisugi. Uh, Lauren or Stuart, you want to explain to people who don't know yakisugi what it is? Um, we don't have it at our place. Stuart, do you have any? No, any no. Place? No. So it's basically using flame to blacken sugi is cedar. So it's usually with cedar, which is already naturally impervious to insects and, and rot. And then you carefully blacken it. Um, and it further just makes it impermeable to everything. I and mean, it's just a wonderful way to preserve the life of your house. And it looks amazing because it comes out black and textured and really rich looking. Yeah, it's But so you have beautiful. to know what you're doing or you burn your house down. Yeah, so there, but there is a this is kind of a, a craftsmanship that's kind of coming back in Japan, yeah. right? It's wonderful to see. It is, it is. And it, yeah. it's more fireproof, right? I've right. heard as well. Ironically. Yeah, you burn it to make it fireproof. That's, that's it. amazing. Uh, that sounds great, Andrea. And then after that is the interesting interiors tour, right? 
It is, yes. And instead of being a tour of mini Minka, it's going to just be focusing on a, a few local Minka, uh, one of which is the headquarters of the uh, Aichiko Minka Association in Shinchiro. And that can be viewed at any, at, at any time uh, during that time frame. So even people that don't go to the, you know, if people would like to just go directly and see the headquarters, they're very welcome to do that. It, you don't need to join the tour and, and do that in order. Uh, and this is a, a, a beautiful, beautiful building that's been relocated from Niigata. Uh, so most of the building comes from Niigata. It's been redesigned. So it looks different from how it looked when it was, you know, originally in Niigata, uh, it was a building that was going to be torn down and incinerated. Um, and I think it was, I think maybe it was relocated maybe five or six years ago. I could be wrong, but anyway, around in that neighborhood. And it, it really just has to be seen to be, to, to be believed. I've been in it many, many times. And every time I, I every time I go there, I notice something new because, uh, 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 the the designer uh, 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 Toda Toda San um, just has such an eye, and it's just so good at taking old things, especially old things that maybe have been discarded, and using them in very very interesting ways. So, um, and people will if people don't make it on Friday, they can also go on Saturday or Sunday uh, to see that 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 beautiful beautiful house. It's rather it's kind of interesting because the beams. On on that one layer of beams or one level of beams kind of on the second floor uh, come from completely from Niigata. And then the, the top level of beams, because it's a three-story structure, uh, they come from the local Okumikawa area. So it's kind of a nice hybrid of these two. These and, two to have, and to have a three-story house, a three-story renovated Minka is really unusual. Uh, in the in the top picture, is that uh, like a plaster? Is that connected to the plastering or the interiors? It is. Uh, that's um, Emily Kaneko Ren Reynolds, uh, and it's a it's an image that she. I asked her if she could please send us some images because we've been posting them on on Facebook to let give people an idea of you know what's going to be happening, uh, and that's we can see a little bit. I think she's there in her element. She's really an extraordinary person. She's written some books. She's almost finished a PhD uh, in, in her, in her area. Uh, and she's just really an expert. So. Wow. Yeah. That's That's exciting. And Lauren, you're Lauren, you've done a lot of uh, work on the interior of your house too, that you talked about last year, right? Yeah, yeah, it's kind of an <laughs> ongoing work in progress. And Stuart, did you do any of the work yourself or, or you hired local people to help with the interior? Well, with the uh, original uh, renovations, the flooring and everything, I, I hired professional people. Um, but I think uh, one of the interesting things about Inaka life is that you you kind of gradually <laughs> begin to do more and more things on your own and you start watching... Uh, YouTube videos and searching for, gee, I want to do this. How do I do this? So um, I'm actually doing a, more and more each year on my own and learning how to, you know, properly use use tools and things. Wow. So. Yeah, that's amazing. And then Lauren, also your partner, he, he does a lot of the work uh, himself, right? As well as you do a lot of the creative design. But I think also being able to, even if you hire local professionals, being able to to be creative in how you want it redesigned uh, is also something that I was really encouraged by because uh, we remodeled our old house. But I had so many struggles trying to get a more creative design that I wanted. Um, well, well, so, in fact, that's actually yeah. a great segue because <laughs> I wanted to mention that uh, you know, we haven't really talked about our keynote speaker yet, uh, Akishita san. Mm. And I think probably, you know, all of us here have been enormously influenced by his work. Um, mm. I mean, for me, his, his book, uh, Japanese Country Living, I think is the, the English title of it. Um, the Bible. The Bible, exactly. And <laughs> when I 
got my Minka in, in 2016, I didn't know what I was doing at all. I had no, no clue. And so I was looking at all these different books and I came across uh, Takeshita San's uh, book among, among others. And uh, this is probably true with everybody here. I mean, I was looking at, at these photos and saying, oh, I want it to be like that. Oh, I want to do a ceiling that looks like this. And it's all from uh, the amazing work that he has done over nearly 60 years now. And uh, like a lot of people who get into Minka, you mentioned uh, Chuck Kayser earlier. Chuck Kayser is a completely self-taught organic farmer who is now uh, a real expert in that in this field. And uh, Takeshita San was the same. He was he's basically a self-taught architect. Uh, and his his work is just so amazing and so um, uh, influential on on all of us who are doing Minka because we just look at his photographs of the interiors and exteriors of his Minka and his roofs and everything and we get our ideas and we we try <laughs> sometimes yeah. not too well to and i have not been able to get his book it's out of print so if anybody has one you can lend me so i can prepare for the panel mm. please 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 i will give it back <laughs> yeah. i would really appreciate that well <laughs> also on on our facebook page uh the we also widely share uh the short documentary that features him uh, which discusses uh, his uh, relationship with John Roderick, who was a, a newspaper reporter, I think, for the Associated Press back in the and 1960s. Who wrote, wrote the book The Minka, which was yes, really about which is a, another Sun, major right? must see, must read uh, book for anyone that's interested in Minka. And uh, the documentary is, is also really amazing and, and uh, expresses so much of what we all feel about our Minka. Yeah. Mm. Wonderful. Uh, Andrea, back to you. Let's continue. Uh, for Saturday. So the end of the first day, you have the meet and greet dinner. And we that was, that was a wonderful way to meet everyone and hear a little bit uh, from the keynote speakers. Is that going to be similar again this year? It will be very, very similar again this year. Last year, as you said, it was it was lovely last year, I thought, and it was just such a nice way to meet so many really, really interesting people. And I, I, I think last year I really felt that the the summit was sort of characterized by such a friendly festive, uh, you know, really fun kind of atmosphere. And uh, we're doing our best to make sure that that's very much the mood this year. And that, you know, people that are really deeply interested in Mika, Minka, of course, you know, uh, are this is really, you know, a festival or not a festival, but a summit for them. Uh, and then also people that maybe you're not so interested in in Minka. There's there's just really going to be something for for everyone. Um, so yes, we'll, we'll finish uh, Saturday with a or Friday with a meet and greet dinner, uh, and then Saturday. Uh, as happened last year, we'll start with Minka tours. Um, and this year, the Minka tours are going to be slightly different because it's a, in terms of how they're set up and uh, because it's, a, you know, it's a different area and everything. We'll have some tours that will be going on mostly all day. Uh, so that, you know, if people have, when the sessions are running in the afternoon, if people have a, a, a break or a bit of time that they'd like to go on a walking tour, uh, or also if, if walking is maybe a little bit, uh, a bit strenuous, uh, they're also welcome to drive because there will be parking. And so there'll be a couple of, uh, I think maybe three really, really interesting uh, buildings for people, uh, Minka, for people to see uh, within within walking distance or within a very short drive. Uh, are, these, are these Minka that have been remodeled or Minka that are for sale? 
I don't think any of these are for sale. Uh, one of them is a, a very recently uh, renovated small building. It's not a large grand building, but the renovation is just really, really lovely. Uh, again, a very interesting interior. And I think this building also will have on the on Friday afternoon, people can pop over and see it. Um, and uh, the, the the reason for the building's existence is that uh, it's going to be a place that people either from the city or young people in the local area or not so young people in the local area can use as a place, a kind of a home office. So people can, you know, sort of reserve that time. They can stay there. Uh, it has a 3D printer it's it's just really well set up for that and then you know to be able to do this in just such a, a lovely 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 kind of working environment um i think is a, is a great opportunity so that will be that will be open for people to see and there will be people there to you know to show people around and explain different different aspects of of the building and then uh just up the road or maybe down the road just a few minutes uh we're very fortunate it because um, uh, Hazugasho, one of the really uh, main uh, ryokans in the Yuyo Onsen area, uh, but Hazugasho isn't actually at Yuyo Onsen. Yuyo Onsen is a five minute drive down the road. Hazugasho is a little bit more up on the side of a mountain or a hill, uh, and it's just right around the corner from the building that I just mentioned. We can't, we we're not they, they've been so kind in agreeing to let us come and and see you know have a tour of this amazing building i believe i could be wrong but i i believe it may be uh may have been relocated and then and then renovated but it's just stunning as you can imagine i can't uh, wait to see it uh, just just a quick note we had uh Fras on youtube asking for book recommendations so maybe anybody watching or Lauren or Stuart, if you have book recommendations, maybe you can write in the chat as uh, Andrea continues yeah. on the schedule. We we have a list, right? Yeah. On the uh, website. I don't I thought we put it on the website, but I was just looking for that when I saw that text. It means to get it. Forgive me, Lauren. It may be hidden at the moment, uh, but with a click of a mouse, we can we can display it easily. So there there is that on the website, definitely. So we, we can make that public again. Okay, great. Okay. Yeah, and then uh, going back going back to the schedule. So being able to see the Minka houses, and then uh, of course that's one of the main days. So you have uh, the Minka Mall will be open. And then uh, you have DIY demonstrations. Uh, Emily Kaneko Reynolds, who you mentioned earlier, right? Suchikabe right. mud walls. Yes, yes. And if if I could just return for a moment to the Minka tour, because there's another uh, another aspect to it as well. Uh, so in addition to the local walking tours, um, and I I also just like to note that part of that there's also a little bit more distant from the other two buildings or the other two Minka, but there's a lovely Kaminka studio that's right beside a really beautiful pottery kiln. Uh, so it's also maybe a worth worth a bit of a walk over uh, to see that. And we also have a bus tour. Um, um, and that's to a different area. So I just want to tell people about this because it, I think it's also going to be really, really interesting. Um, and this is just in the morning. Uh, it's only by bus. And the reason for this is we want to be very sensitive to the community and not have a lot of cars coming in. So we'll have a bus. We'll have two buses, uh, which have been very, very, very uh, generously. Uh, the funding for the buses has been donated by Shinshiro City. So we're, we're really grateful to them. Shinjiro City has been just incredibly helpful and welcoming to the summit. Uh, so we're, we're, yeah, we'd like to thank them for that. And uh, the bus tours, what will happen is the bus will park, it, it will depart from the venue, uh, park, uh, 
at a community center in a beautiful area called Atera. And Atera is probably about a 30 minute drive from the venue. It's a mountainous area, really beautiful terraced uh, rice fields. Uh, the, the community is sort of built along uh, the side of a small uh, hill or, or mountain, and there'll be a walking tour then. So it'll, it will be by bus and then a guided tour. And I think right now, I believe there's five, maybe six minka um, of different types uh, that will be part of the tour. Um, and uh, this is something that people that do buy, people can buy tickets on the day that's very welcome to do so. But because the bus tour is a bit limited, it, it will only be 40 people each day because we're, there's just a, you know, a limit to how many people can go on the buses. Uh, or actually, no, forgive me, it might be more. It's 80 people each day, forgive me. Uh, uh, so, but still there is a limit. So people that have bought tickets in advance, we, we, we hate to do this, but we'll have to give priority to them. So, so please uh, do buy your tickets in advance if you'd like to go on, on that tour. Thank you. Yeah, great. And then uh, like last year in the Minka Mall, you also have uh, the children's mini Minka building, uh, which was so sweet and such a great example of, of how Minka are built. Uh, Stuart or Lauren, do you want to talk about that from last year, what we might see again this year? Stuart, uh, well, last year I, w I was so busy. I had very little time in the Lincoln <laughs> Mall. So I saw I saw the kids working on it with the big mallets and and hammering away and it looked really fun. But that's I just had little more than a passing glance at it and was dashing off to something else. May I talk about it? Yeah, go ahead, Andrea. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, what happened last year, and it's very similar to what's going to happen this year, is that um, the lovely people at Tota Comb 10, uh, which is a, a wonderful design build uh, company down the road in Shinshiro, um, and you can see here a, a, a child pounding away, they made too many minka mini minka frames, and they made them from old wood from Minka. So they they truly are, you know, uh, really uh, mini Minka frames. Uh, they they're not using. They may be. They may have used a little bit of new wood, but I don't think they used much. And what they did was they made two of them, and then they uh, when they got to the site or just out in front of the Minka Mall, they assembled one, and then with help of of of, uh, of carpenters, uh, adult carpenters, uh, the 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 youth carpenters, then most of whom I think were maybe elementary school age, uh, then put on their as you can see their hard hats and they have their, you know, their proper carpenter carpentry wear, uh, and they 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 use the the uh, the already assembled Minka to. Uh, create the frame for uh the other the other minka and then at the end of that when they had the two mini minka as we call them assembled uh then mm -hmm. uh some boards were put across and uh the children sat on them and they were presented with some uh, uh kind of a plaque uh, signifying that they had raised the frame and then they had a mini frame raising ceremony where they tossed out sweets and other goodies to the children who were who were there in the audience um and i think one thing uh that we did last year and we're very keen to do again this year is to make sure that we all of the children that show up have a chance to be involved, not because of the, you know, it won't be possible maybe for all of the children to be the ones actually throwing out the sweets, uh, but, but everybody will have a chance to have a go with uh, raising the frame for sure. This year we only have one frame and the reason is at this time unless they uh, unless they're able to make another frame uh, and the reason is that we sent one to a, a, a Minka festival uh, in Oregon and so it, it will be one frame but it will still be a really a really fabulous experience I think for the children and their parents. That's great. I'm showing the Instagram page for Kominka Japan. Uh, your photos from last year when the kids were making the mini minka, a great experience. And uh, it looks like you also had uh, crafts 
and DIY for adults as well. Are you going to offer that again? This is from last year. You will. We hope that we have chopstick making again. I'm still waiting for a, a, a confirmation, uh, but we do hope that we have that. Uh, we'll also have as kind of ongoing. We have some workshops that will just be ongoing throughout the day and then others that will happen a couple times and then others that will happen just, just, just once. And among the ongoing workshops, we have, uh, for example, uh, um, making furniture from old wood from Kominka. Uh, we also will have um, making um, these really beautiful panels um, using old kimono fabric. Uh, we will also have pottery making. Uh, so some of these things that are going on, and as I think I may have mentioned earlier, uh, onigiri making and uh, just so many, many, many things. Uh, and I'm very afraid that I might be forgetting uh, to mention some of them. Uh, and some of them, as I mentioned before, are directly related to a traditional Japanese carpentry or you know, some aspect of minka um, or are using old minka wood or, or things like this. Others are maybe not, like for example, using washi uh, to make beautiful panels for homes. Um, it might not be directly related to uh, minka per se, but they certainly could be put up in a in a minka or, or in a, a house or, or some kind of uh, building that's not a minka. So there, there truly will be something for, for everyone. Uh, and, we're that's, also and that's such a nice, a nice tangent as well, right? It's not just about Minka houses. It's also really about uh, rural living in Japan and how you can uh, have a nice house. You can have a really nice quality of life, maybe a little bit slower pace. I really felt that was one of the biggest takeaways uh, from last year. And I imagine anyone coming this year will have a similar takeaway. You talk to loads of people who made the transition from the city to the countryside and just find an amazing balance, right? Don't you think, Lauren or Suri? You want to comment on that? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, certainly in, in, in my case, uh, when we first decided to live here and uh, we, we are in a, a pretty rural village that has, <clears throat> that doesn't have things like there's no gas station, there's no convenience store, there are virtually no restaurants, there's certainly nothing like Starbucks or a mini mall or shopping center or anything like that. Um, and I was uh, uh, originally uh, concerned because, you know, I didn't want to end up like Jack Nicholson in The Shining chasing my family around with an ax. Uh, and, and it turned out that we all love it. And in fact, my uh, daughter who is, has graduated from uh, junior high school, wanted to go to a rural high school, a small rural high school. So, so now she's actually coming near you in, in Hiroshima. And um, so I think for me, a big part of at least uh, uh, one aspect of the summit and of uh, Kominka Japan generally is looking for ways to uh, try to keep these small rural villages going and even revitalizing them through various means like uh, uh, Chuck's organic farming, people opening uh, uh, guest houses or uh, microbreweries and people are doing all kinds of amazing things. That was one of the, again, one of the great things about last year's summit is you got to meet and talk with people who are doing, uh, even if they're doing something completely different from what you're doing, it's still fascinating and they, to learn the nuts and bolts of how they're getting something going. So uh, it's very much a part of, of what, what, what we're trying to do. Yeah, absolutely. Lauren, you want to come in on that? Yeah, I think more through what my work, well, probably equal parts through Komeka Japan and through my work, I spend a lot of time in these rural villages and it's been really inspiring some of the places we visited to see that they're having these um, 
these you know, organized events, you know, where they're inviting, you know, young families or couples under 40 or self-employed people um, to come and, and take up these empty houses for either minimal rent or work to own. There's all sorts of different deals going on. Um, and it's, it's helping, you know, it's, it's kind of a drop in the ocean, but it's, it is helping and some of these villages are starting to thrive. Um, I, I wish that the Western media would, would do a little more research though. I think one of the things that keeps coming up and we see it on the Facebook group a lot are, you know, these people that are seeing these move to Japan and they give you a house. <laughs> it's not really quite that easy as all of us know. Um, so it'd be great to get more more information rather than disinformation out there that, yeah, it'd be wonderful if somebody came here and saved a house, but you know, it's, it's, it's yeah. a lot more. Well, and there was, there was a lot of diverse opinions about uh, things like buying a house as an outsider and uh, using it as a guest house, using it as a holiday house. Right. Um, there were a lot of discussions, and I think that was a really healthy part of the event too, right? Uh, not everybody agrees right. on exactly how they should be used, but you're right, Lauren, all that clickbait about get a free house in Japan mm. and it's not that helpful. Yeah. <laughs> no, during COVID, I mean, it's partly what put us on the map, I guess, but you know, the, that's the dark side, mm. the flip side is that, you know, there's just, but I think stuff. also, you know, as Alex yeah. said during the event, we're kind of at this, this turning point where, um, you have all these different Akia bank programs scattered throughout at, at various levels. Mm -hmm. But uh, as, as Alex said, there's this huge surge of uh, foreign residents as well as some Japanese who are now just taking it on, on, on their own. They're, they're just doing it by themselves. And I think that the, the pendulum is swinging in such a way where, yes, Japan's uh, aging population and the depopulation of rural Japan will still continue. And that population, you know, it'll, it'll still be going down. But at the same time, more and more foreigners, as well as some Japanese, are moving in. And I think um, uh, the, the tide is turning and eventually... Uh, I think many rural communities will bounce back a little bit, uh, slowly but measurably. I'm very optimistic yeah. about the future. Yeah, and I think yeah, a lot think of us so. felt that, right, at the event last year, yeah. is that you feel mm -hmm. like, wow, a tide is turning. There's so much interest. And Stuart, didn't you say a lot mm -hmm. of local people were really surprised by how oh, many yeah. people were so enthusiastic, right? Yeah, people, local people were coming to the event and they would park their car in the big giant vast parking lot that we had set up. And they were amazed looking at the license plates from all the different prefectures all over Japan. They had never seen an event right. like that come to their small village where people are from everywhere. Mm. So, and Alex, Alex referred to it as the Woodstock, the, the Woodstock, Woodstock of yeah. old houses in Japan, right? <laughs> yeah, and I don't think, you know, the event itself was not uh, the thing that's bringing about the change. It's everybody who's coming, everybody who's so enthusiastic, that's what's driving the change. We're just kind of like, we're, we're acting as like a little engine to bring everybody together. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, Andrea, do you want to go back and uh, continue? So the Saturday, then we have more of the the main speakers that people can enjoy you're going to have the diy going on the minka mall and then uh, tell us a little bit about the night of the saturday and sunday okay so saturday night uh is again as was the case last year is going to be again the keynote dinner and as Stuart uh mentioned we are just so uh just absolutely um, so honored and and delighted that uh, Yoshihiro Takishita uh, san has agreed to be the keynote speaker. Um, that's we we just feel incredibly lucky. Uh, and um, in addition, Alex Kerr is going to introduce him. So just so so many you know wonderful things that will be happening at the dinner. Uh, we'll also I throughout the event, if I can just mention, uh, we'll also have music. We'll have shakuhachi and flute and some piano uh, and.
perhaps some uh, other traditional Japanese instruments uh, as well. So we'll have a, a little bit of music uh, at the at the keynote dinner. Um, it will be, I think, essentially the same format as we had last year, where uh, first people will gather and and chat a bit, and and food will be uh, laid out, and and people will uh, enjoy eating and and uh, making friends and and uh, having lovely conversations. Uh, then we'll have just a bit of a bit of music, and then, uh, as I mentioned, Alex Kerr will uh, introduce Takisha San uh, for what, what promises to be an absolutely fascinating uh, keynote talk. So that's Saturday night. Um, Sunday night, we don't have a dinner planned. Dinners are only Friday and, and Saturday. Uh, and uh, Stuart mentioned uh, a couple weeks ago on the Facebook group that uh, the number of tickets are getting a bit low for the keynote dinner. So uh, anyone that hasn't bought yet bought a ticket for the keynote dinner, it, it won't be possible to buy them at the door. Um, that you really probably would do well to uh, to go on to PTIX and and um, and there's a PTIX link uh, on on the website that you can easily go in and book. Uh, otherwise, I think that they will be sold out. Um, the 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 big news on on Sunday is that of course we don't have a keynote dinner, but as Lauren mentioned, we are going to have a Minka Master uh, Minka Masters panel, and you know. That's just again, uh, there are so many incredible things that are happening throughout this summit. Uh, and this is really one of the perhaps one of the most incredible things, I think. Uh, this is going to be taking place, I believe, from 2:30. <laughs> excuse me, 2.45 until 4.15 on Sunday. Uh, and as Lauren mentioned, it's going to be moderated by the very wonderful you, uh, JJ. And then uh, we'll, we'll have Takish Tassan and uh, Alex Kerr, Asby Brown and Tomoko Kubo, as, as Lauren mentioned. Uh, and then after that, we'll have a uh, a group photo and and say uh, you know a very heartfelt thank you to everyone and goodbye. Uh, both afternoons from eleven o'clock on, with a pretty sizable break for lunch, so that people can pop over to the Minka Mall area. The we'll, we'll have a range of food trucks there with various uh, things to eat for lunch and to have for snacks throughout the day, uh, and so people can pop over, have a bit of food, listen to some music. Music, walk around the Minka Mall. Um, and the Minka Mall will start at 10 both days. Uh, and then, the, as I just mentioned, the, um, the parallel sessions, the presentations will take place from 11. And they're going to be in a different building, uh, not, at, not in the Minka Mall. That would just be too much activity in one place. They're going to be in large uh, lecture style rooms uh, in a building that's not visible from the Minkum Wall, but it's perhaps maybe a two, three minute walk down a, a, a little hill. Uh, so that, that's what's going to be happening. Um, uh, Lauren mentioned the panel discussions. In addition, uh, we have uh, the parallel dis uh, sessions. And the reason that we did that last year, we didn't do that, but we're doing that this year so that we can have more presentations. And uh, Lauren prepared the schedule very, very, very uh, carefully and very cleverly in a way that, uh, for example, uh, the presentation that might be happening in room one is going to be quite different from what's going on in room two, so that people perhaps won't be struggling too much in terms of deciding which session they want to go and attend. Uh, and we will video, you know, we'll record and then put up on the on the website uh, on YouTube and then on the website. Uh, so if you if you can't go to both, you'll be able to see the one that you couldn't see. So that, 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 sounds, that, plans. that sounds wonderful. There's so much exciting things happening. Uh, we have just a couple more minutes. Uh, any final words anybody want to say to encourage people to sign up and make the effort to come out and join us at the event this year? Stuart, you want to start? Uh, well, uh, what I can say is uh, I have not actually been to this particular venue yet <laughs> because I'm in Kyoto, but um, 
just for people generally, I, I did go to Aichi for the uh, uh, expo, if you remember that, from about a dozen years ago. Uh, one of the advantages to Aichi is that it's very convenient to most of Japan. It's a very easy access. When we did the Minka, Minka Summit last year, we did it here in northern Kyoto Prefecture, uh, which for, for most people that have Minka, they're used to mountain driving and, and rural roads and things. But there were, there were some people who were a little bit uh, taken aback by uh, the mountain roads and, and everything else. And uh, this year, um, the event is very, very convenient. It's, it's uh, very convenient to uh, the Shinkansen and train stations, and it's very easy to get to. And um, uh, you don't have to go through the trauma of driving a, <laughs> a dangerous mountain road uh, to get that's there. A, that's a huge point of appeal. And the tickets are very reasonable. Is it only 5,000 yen for three days? That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, Lauren, any final words to get people to the summit this year? Oh, gosh. I can't <laughs> wait. I'm really looking forward to it. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a busy spring in the world of tourism. So I'm looking forward to a few days of not doing tourism. Um, but still but yeah, doing tourism with Minka. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 A little different. Um, but yeah, like Stuart said at the outset, Andrea's done a fabulous job pulling this all together. And of course, everybody's chipped in, but I, I think it's going to be fun and, and educational and inspiring. And, uh, yeah, fantastic. Time. Andrea, any final words? Uh, I, to sign off? Okay, I'd just like to echo what Stuart and Lauren said. Really, uh, uh, you, you don't want to miss this event. It's just going to be really amazing, thanks to the hard work of the organizing team, and really thanks to all of the wonderful people that are going to come and present. I'd also just like to mention that we've been very fortunate this year, because at the logistic level, at the local level, we've been so supported uh, by the Japan Kominka Association and by their Aichi brand and by a local NPO, Inaka Kurashitai, uh, which is a, an Okumikawa NPO. They're working really hard at the kind of the, you know, the, the venue level and arranging, liaising, uh, you know, with Shinshiro City and, and those things. And also just to comment, as Stuart did, uh, that it's easy to get to and all of the information about how to get there is online on our website in both languages. And we will, and uh, if you send us an email, if you need help with accommodations or anything, we'll, uh, we'll get right back to you. Thank you. Yeah, wonderful. And we have a, a final comment from Frass on YouTube uh, saying he can't make it on Friday, but he's going to re try really hard to get there Saturday and Sunday. That's awesome. And uh, wants links to Andrea's website and all the others on the panel. So all the links are on the, mm -hmm. the website. I believe you can link to everywhere you need. Just mm -hmm. make sure you scroll all the way to the bottom and you should find all the links that you need, right? Absolutely. Yeah, and we'll unveil the book list, right? Our, our reading will. list. Yeah, fantastic. So thank you all so much for joining and for sharing all the insights. I'm so excited about the event this year. I can't wait be, be, to be there. I'll only be there on Sunday, but I will make the most of it and uh, get around and talk to as many people as I can. And I'm really excited about reaching out to all the fantastic speakers that you have um, who I haven't talked to yet on the show, and hopefully I can get them on either before or after the summit this year and really expand on the great work that everyone is doing. And you guys as organizers, really, thank you so much for all the work that you're doing to put this together again for year two. Oh, Yay. Well, thank you for your, your continued support of everything yeah. and having us on. Of course. It's yeah, a absolutely. pleasure. Well, thank you all so much. And thank you, uh, thank you everybody for watching and see you at the summit. Bye-bye.